thank you so much for joining us in our worship today. You'll see that we're in St Michael's Church at Horton this morning. In our watching and our waiting, come Lord Jesus. In our homes and in our world, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus, bless us and inspire us as we look forward to your birthday. And so we come to our opening prayer. We pray together. As we prepare to celebrate the first coming of Jesus, may we know that he is always with us, giving us the encouragement we need to follow him more faithfully every day of our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sins. O oh God our Father, we ask your forgiveness for the times when we have failed you, when we have not cared enough for your world. In your mercy, forgive us, O oh God. When we have not cared enough for each other. In your mercy, forgive us, O oh God. When we have not cared enough for you. In your mercy. Forgive us, O God, when we have been content with ourselves as we are. In your mercy, forgive us, O God. Fill our hearts with the love that cares and show us how we can serve those in need. Amen. In the days after the time of trouble, the sun will grow dark, the moon will no longer shine and the stars will fall from heaven. Then, the Son of Man will appear, coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send the angels out to four corners of the earth to gather God's chosen people from one end of the world to another. Remember that all these things will happen soon. No one knows when that day or hour will come. Not the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father knows. Be on watch, for you do not know when the time will come. It will be like a man who goes away from home on a journey and leaves his servants in charge, leaving everyone with something to do. They do not know when the master of the house will come, so they have to always be ready for his return. It's the same for you. Watch and be ready. The theme for today's service on this Advent Sunday is Are We Ready? Are We Ready? In life, I try to be tidy. It doesn't always work, but I do try to be tidy. And if I'm part way through doing something and I run out of time, then I try to put everything away, just in case someone comes to visit and the house is in a mess. Well, coronavirus has changed all of that. No longer do I have to put anything away, because I know that if someone does call, then I can't invite them in. Hence, I confess, my standards have slipped. Coronavirus has changed many things. Its consequences have been absolutely devastating for millions of people worldwide. And I don't mean to be flippant about tidying the house. Many people I know are bereft and lost and lonely. We wonder where it will all end. 
We wonder when it will all end. None of us know, because none of us can see into the future. Some have claimed to be able to, be it by the use of a crystal ball or swirling tea leaves in a cup. None of which I recommend, and none of which I hasten to add work. In our Bible reading set for today, Jesus is teaching his disciples about the future, the end times as it's called. He's trying to prepare them for what's to come, his return. And I quote from verse 26, it says, Then the Son of Man will appear, coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He was telling them about when he would come back to earth again. But I admit to thinking that this passage is a little confusing because in it Jesus also says, Remember that all these things will happen before the people now living have all died. Well, 2,000 years later, we know that all of those who were alive at the time are now long gone. And yet, as far as I understand it, the Son of Man has not yet appeared or come in the clouds with great power and glory. What are we to make of it? Is it a riddle? For me, the clue lies right at the end of this passage when Jesus says, No one knows when that day or hour will come. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, only the Father knows. In other words, it's not for us to know. After Jesus said this, he gave an illustration of a man who went away and left his servants in charge. What, I wonder, would they do while he was away? Would they continue with their daily chores, ensuring that everything was just as it should be for when the master came back? Or would they mess about, taking advantage of the time that he was away, slacking, slipping, doing their own thing? Would they let their standard slip? What's that saying? While the cat's away, the mice will play. I think it's safe to say that 2,000 years after Jesus returned to heaven, he's still not come back to earth. Jesus may not yet have returned, but you know his kingdom has already dawned. God's kingdom was established long ago in a stable in Bethlehem. And it was further established through his ministry here on earth and through his victory over death. Rest assured, God's kingdom has come. It's here, it's now, through the work of his Holy Spirit. Admittedly, the fulfillment of God's kingdom, the day when Christ will rule on earth as he does in heaven, is awaited still. But it's not for us to know or even try to find out when that will be. In the meantime, God calls each and every one of us to celebrate his love now, to seek his mercy now, to experience his joy now, and with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit, to offer ourselves in his service now. As a token, of our love for God, let's not let our standards slip, but let's continue to serve him daily so that when he does return in all his glory, he'll see that yes, we are prepared, we are ready, we have not let slip the standards that he showed us. Let's trust in the future, certainly prepare for it, but do so by focusing on the response we make in the present and leave the rest to him. In his name we ask. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We say together, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God but made himself nothing, 
taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Lord, at this time of Advent, as we look towards your coming again, we pray with a sense of expectancy, yet we ask, help us to know you now, to love you now, to serve you now, to live each day as your children, seeking and honouring your will. Open our hearts to the reality of your kingdom here on earth. Fill us with your presence and teach us more of your ways so that in everything we do, think and say, we may work to help your kingdom grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we look towards your coming again, we pray for peace in your world at this time. We pray for the United Nations, for wisdom with the difficult decisions they have to make. We pray for our Queen and government. We pray for nations where there is war, disaster or famine. We pray for those whose lives have been devastated by coronavirus for those who are working constantly to bring healing and relief, for those striving to finalise a suitable, safe vaccine. Lord, may your power and glory be revealed through them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who watch and wait while we are asleep, for the police, ambulance, hospital workers, firefighters, and all who work in the dark hours of night, bringing protection and help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may your presence be known to all who feel unable to cope at this time, those weighted down with troubles, loneliness, anguish and despair. We pray for the sick, and for those who care for them, in the stillness of our hearts, we pray for them now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of our salvation, who has the victory over death, we pray for those who mourn, we give you thanks for those whom we have loved and lost during trusting in your promises that those who have departed this world now resign, rejoice in the light and the fullness of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, bring light into our lives that we may reflect your glory and bring peace to this world. Banish the darkness and make us ready for that day when we shall see you face to face. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. We keep a moment of silence before we say the collect together. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, this day and always. As we await our coming Saviour, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>